As always, I want to thank you for being God all by yourself. Thank you for the most precious gift. The blood that Jesus shed it for us on Calvary. Lord, we know without that, that blood that there would be no remissions of the sin. Thank you for the posture. Roman 1, Sunday, Senior. The vision that you, you blessed him with to, to let him have his hands in this community. Thank you, Brother Associates, Brother Doug, and Brother David, the deacons. Thank you, Brother Pantry staff and the kitchen staff, Lord, and the walk ins, all those that are doing these doors. Thank you, Brother City of Life. Heavenly Father, I'm praying that you bless me, Lord, as I get ready to share the word today. It's been almost two months since I preached. And Lord, you know what all I've been going through. And because I serve you, Lord, I call it all joy. Praying that the word go forward. Not only we get this, this physical blessing, Lord, but, but we get that true bread. That word from God today. These are all blessed and blessed pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand. Amen. Amen. Kitchen staff is still getting close. Let's give them a minute or two. I'm going to play another song or two before I get into the word. Glad to see everybody. I know I've been out a while, but I just want to thank the staff and the pantry for, for keeping things moving in my absence. I actually talk pray for me again today as I get ready to share the word today. Enjoy your week. Don't you know we come this far?
67 through 62. Our key verse is going to be verse 58. It reads as, And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nets, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his hand. Amen. Our subject is going to be true cause to follow me. See, there's true cause to follow me. We're talking about Jesus. If you're going to follow him, if you're going to serve him, you need to know there's some true cause. You got to that. It's not easy. Jesus never wanted to accept the original disciples under false pretenses. So he always let them know what the price of discipleship was. He did not want the crowd to follow him without understanding and appreciation of what they have to give up. See, it's something you have to give up if you're going to follow Jesus. It ain't about what you want to do anymore. Huh? Amen. It's about what Jesus wants to do with you. Amen. You become a part of his family. You become a part of him. Amen. Jesus wants to separate the casual from the consecrated. What are we saying? See, there are some that say they love him, but they just talk. Him. There are some that say they want to follow him, but they don't really mean it. But there are some that's consecrated that have accepted this calling, has accepted the terms that you're going to have to give up some things. If you want to be a true servant of Jesus. Amen. We say. It pays to serve Jesus. But it also, it costs to serve Jesus. There's many things that Brother Mike used to do that he can't do no more. I have to walk away from it. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. The flesh be calling me. The devil is always been. He's everywhere. And in your house, in your neighborhood, in your street, even here at New Mount Island in the church. The devil is. But when you've been consecrated, you gotta push past that mess. You gotta say the Lord has something for me to do that's more important than the mess that's going around going on around me. Mm. True cause to follow. What are the barriers to discipleship? But before we get into that, let's read some texts. Luke 9 tells us that now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. That's almost like coming down to the altar. When we come down, we say, we're ready to follow you. We're ready to commit. <laughs> and Jesus said to them, foxes have holes and birds have, birds of the air have nets. But the Son of Man has no one to lay his hand. Then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go bury my father. <laughs> Jesus said to him, let the dead bury the own dead. But you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another said to him, Lord, I will follow you. But let me first go and be a farewell who are at my house. See, before he was going to follow Jesus, he wanted to go home and check in and let them know that there was something the Lord wanted to do. But this was Jesus himself. Oh, man, when he called you, you got to drop some things. You got to realize that stuff don't take care of itself. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hands to the prop and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. See, see, you can't say you're a true worshiper, you're a true disciple. Every time something happens in your life, you give up on Jesus. Every time the obstacle get in your way, you don't want to serve no more. I want you to know there is barriers. Some of them are personal comfort. The first one being disciple in our passage would not follow because he would have to give up 
some things, some comforts. What about you? Is, is what stopping you from connecting with Jesus is you going to have to give up some things? You going to have to give up some worldly things? You going to have to deny yourself of some things? I want you to know them things ain't going to last forever. That stuff is tangible, man. But serving God, becoming part of the family is something that is eternal and everlasting. Might seem like you're getting shortchanged on this side. But I tell you, if you suffer with him on this side, you're going to reign with him on the other side. And that is eternity. Amen. The gospel is something. I'll quiet that a little bit further. I'm going to share the word. Be respectful of God's word. The gospel is simple. But it is not easy. It calls people to move to a mission field or give up their tragedy. You see, it calls you to get away from self and be about serving the Lord. There are many people willing to be in the army. As long as they're on the march in the parade, so they want to have to stand because they want to be seen. They want to be a part of the team and they want to get the good news to go along with that. But when the trouble comes, when, when the battle comes, when the crowd is left, when the place got to be cleaned up, and the kitchen staff got to put up on the bar, and, 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 and the defense group trying to get things ready, when the labor comes, they don't want to be a part. But when the lights turn on, when people can see you, you want to say you're part of the kingdom. It don't work like that. This is a full-time thing. This has got to be a part of it. Even in the ministry, we got some Christians who want to be sometime Christian. Sunday morning, you want to act holy. Monday morning, you're raising all kind of hands. Now, what kind of commitment is that? Yeah. The gospel may very well make you comfortable in some areas. More than making you happy. More than making you a happy person. So the gospel would be to make you a fulfilled person. Jesus ain't just about making you happy. He, he wants to brush you with some things. He wants you to have some things. Some things are all right. But what he's focusing on is your fulfillment. Do you want a part of this guarantee? Do you want to be having a part of this inheritance? Do you know that he's coming back? And when he comes back, he's going to be looking for his people. That is the burial of misplaced priorities. The second would be disciple felt the call of baptized over the call to discipleship. And if I went down that one, I'd be over all things. I love all my family. I love, I love people. The pastor loves people. That's why we're doing this. I want you to know this meeting program is not a government man program. The pastor gave, the Lord gave our pastor, Brother Clarence Uncle Senior, a vision to meet this community at their knees, to, to let a helping hand, to, to show you some love, to provide some, some physical love for you to do this good out of some meal you eat today. And I ain't even ate yet, but I think I saw some homemade cornbread out there. Wholesome meals, man. That's love. That's love. But if he changed his mind tomorrow, if the Lord gave the pastor a new vision that this meeting ministry ain't working out, that they're coming in here giving good, but they don't want to hear the word. They're coming in here making a mockery of the Lord. He can change his mind about this meeting program and shut it down. And that's exactly what Jesus was showing his disciples. It cost to serve. We're not in it just about the meal. We hope you enjoy it. And we put love in it. But what's most important to us is that you get this true word. This word of God. Man. That's what can save you. I appreciate you when you come in day in, day out. I've been sharing this word now a few years. And many of you are your part of the family. When we see you for the first time, we want to love on you and show you. We thank you for being here. You're helping to move God's kingdom forward. You serve just by being in the audience when you listen. But when you're being a distraction and you know you're wrong, you're trying to disturb God's work. 
But that's when the Holy Spirit kicks in to those who have been consecrated. We don't let distractions stop God's word. It keeps going. Because God's word is going to be fulfilled. My job is to put it out there. Your job is to receive it or reject it. My job is to make the gospel plain to you. That's what we're trying to do. Amen. Some like this man makes family the focus of their life. As I said, I love all my family. But sometimes your family can be going in a way that's contrary to God's will. And if you're a true servant of God, you ain't supposed to jump on that road and go with it. You're supposed to stand on God's word. That don't mean you don't want it. But I'll see you later. I'll read with that. Catch you when you come back this way. I'm going to show you some love. I'm going to share some scriptures with you, but I ain't going downhill with you, brother. Sister. Amen. Because I believe in this word of God. That I got to know myself. It ain't just about me pleasing me or me saving you. I can't save you. All I can do is share God's word with you. And the only way you're going to be saved is trusting God's word. That mind will mess you up. It will tell you your plan is going to work. It will tell you your trick is going to work. But Proverbs makes it plain. There's a way that seems right to a man. But that way leads to death and destruction. Man, this world will suck you up, drain you dry. But if you trust God's word, man, get your priority. You're going to see some things happen that man can't do. And I ain't promising you it's always feel good. But I promise you, if God is in it, it's going to be good for you spiritually. He's working on it. Where is God in all of this? Where is God in your life? What do you stand with? Not all things are bad. There are some things we do the Lord wants us to enjoy some worldly things. There are some pleasures we have. He wants us to enjoy our family time. He wants us to relax. Don't get it wrong. I like to do it by the kids. Later they went to visit the dog. I even drank a little wine every night and then. I'm not going to be up here and be a hypocrite. I'm not perfect. I'm just a man. A God sent me. We all got some things we do. If it was based on the law, if it was based on being perfect, would none of us make it? But it ain't based on that. It's based on do you believe him, do you trust in him, are you moving towards him? Are you committed to him? Ain't no deeds you can do that can clean you up good enough to get the help. But one, and that's admit that you are a sinner. That's choose to turn from sin. That's accepting Jesus as head of your life. That's believing that he's coming back. That's the cleaner right there. There's barriers of procrastination. Not to decide. See, we often try to put off any decision whatsoever. We often put off decisions of accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior because we feel like it's going to limit us. There's some things that we're going to be hindered if we want to do we can't do. It is. But there's some things he's going to bless you with that's going to replace those things. No one that's your part of the family. That's supposed to get you through. Pastor blessing you with a good wholesome environment. Brother Mike got DVDs up here and CDs we put in the show with you. So you got something to play with in the night and put in your car and play. That word is always around. So there is no excuse, brother and sister. You don't have to procrastinate. The word can make plain to you. To decide is to decide. And it is a, a way of saying no. When we put on accepting Jesus, so we're saying we're going to wait till we get ourselves clean. We're going to wait till we ain't doing that no more. We're really saying we ain't ready for it, but we don't want it. As we get ready to go. Yes, there are benefits to living a Christian life. Those benefits are significant. Those benefits do not come except to those who will pay the price. Remember, ministry, that cost of sacrifice and that true cost to follow him, believe, deny himself. He loved you so much that he bared the cross for you. He loved you so much that he died on that cross. But in three days, he rose again with all power in his hands. Yeah. He came back. 
Savior of your life. But the day of the light made it plain there's but one way. And that way is Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the light. You can accept him today. You can have one that's never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. But Robert Mike has made it plain today, and you want to get on board. Today can be your day. All you have to do is raise your hand. Amen. Maybe you already accepted him. Maybe you believe in Jesus. But you're also willing to admit sometimes the cost seems a little too high, and you'd be slipping. And you have got twisted. You believe in Jesus, but the world will cut you up. The devil was busy the last night, this morning, even right before we started a kitchen service, somebody approached you the wrong way, you said something, and took you out of the spiritual realm, but right now you want to get back on track and make it plain. This is the time for repentance and prayer. All you got to do is raise your hand. If you believe in it, but you know you're off track a little bit, and you want to rededicate and recommit the Father, I saw you, brother. All you got to do is raise your hand, we'll see. Then we have it. Maybe you just won't pray. We don't need to know all your business. If you want us to pray for you, just raise your hand. We'll see you. We'll close you out with prayer. Amen. We got two brothers. Let's go, man. We got a sister. We'll go my hand. We got four, five. That lets you know six. That lets you know the devil don't have all power. His power is temporary. But God's word is all power. Is there any more? We've got six to raise their hand for prayer, so we're going to pray. Amen. Got another brother there. That's seven. It's been a great day. So we're going to close out with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the gift, the most precious gift, the blood that was shed on Calvary. We thank you, Lord, today we preach from the book of Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62, talking about true cause to follow me. And the person we're talking about following is Jesus. The word went out, Lord, and the word will receive. We had seven, Lord, that asked for prayer. That lets us know that the kitchen is listening. That lets us know that the vision you gave Pastor Lawrence Echo Senior over 40 years ago is coming to fulfillment. Lives are being changed, lives are being impacted right in this kitchen between the cornbread. They know the bread, cornbread can't say. Only God's word. Those that ask for prayer, we have you know that a worldly person. An unbeliever would tell you that prayer cannot change things. But a godly person that believes in Jesus knows that there is power in prayer. Thanks, Ain't about Brother Mike. Ain't about Deacon Middle Brook. It's about Jesus. If he say heal, heal. He say move, move. He say say, say. And he's made it plain. All you have to do is acknowledge him, repent, and accept him. And you will be washed clean. So for all of those who ask for prayer, this was your moment. This power. That in this kitchen was some thing it's just a it's just a routine. This is just something we do because we gotta get a little food. You realize that it's the word is what it's about. That you came in here one way, but you leave it out fulfilled another way. Yes, you wash clean. Yes, there was some that was listening, and we thank God for you. I, I watched the crowd on a prison. I know who's paying attention. I know who's ignoring. I know who's blocking. I know who's hating on God. But I see many making contact. Regardless of where you stand, we want you to know if you're still breathing, if you're still walking, you still got time. It don't have to stop with the prayer. Remember the word. May God bless you. May God hold you. May God keep you. Amen. Let's get down our hands. Amen. I thank God for each little one of you today. I don't feel the Holy Spirit. The word was supported. Let's get Deacon Miller with the hand. He went to the mill. He went to the mill. Not just because he's my uncle, yeah. Yeah. but because he, he, he's recommitted and rededicated his life back to Christ. He served. Thank God for the kitchen staff pushing past the physical and all their.
we're going through. The pantry staff. Thank God for our pastor and his vision and associates and this group that's going on. This great thing we're doing in New Mahalo. Lives are being impacted. Lives are being changed. I thank God for each and every one of you. Hope you guys are enjoying the videos we're playing through a week. I know Sister B has been making sure when I'm not here we got good gospel music going on and a good clean wholesome environment. We do that because we want you to feel special when you come to the Lord's house. Hey Amen. You guys have a blessed day. Pray for me. I'm getting ready to go back to work. I've been dealing with some heat related issues on the job. That's why you had to see me as much. But I promise you, you're going to see more of me in the future. I'm not going to let the devil stop this great thing. God's commission us to do. The word will go forward. You may see me less. But I want you to know I'm here spiritually every day. Because I realize God is doing something special in all of our lives. And I'm a part of that journey. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God hold you. Amen.